All right, today I wanna to talk about domestic violence and INFPs. So this is a topic that is sensitive and I'm gonna be talking about some situations that are graphic. And so I wanna give a trigger warning to you that some of this may be triggering if you have abuse in your past or you are just not uh, very tolerant of hearing about violence. So I wanna give a, a particular shout out in this video to the male INFP experience with domestic violence. And in fact, I think I'm gonna focus on that in this video because um, I think that you know domestic violence in itself is something that is heavily thought of as a man on woman thing. And I think in the realm of male INFPs, we can be the reciprocants of domestic violence because we're so empathetic and we're so NE-ish. So what I mean is, we can come up with all these possibilities to explain away somebody's behavior as to why they may be violent toward us, why they may be abusive, why they may be saying horrible things to us. We can just come up with excuses in our minds and just to explain away this behavior. And this is a problem with male INFPs, I think. Um, and I'm gonna be talking about a personal experience of mine. And I want you to stick around until the end because I'm gonna talk about a friend of mine who I am highly, I think he is highly likely an INFP. And I found out something very interesting and disturbing about him last night. And I want to share that with you. And so I want you to stick around, but first I'm gonna talk about my own experiences dealing with domestic violence as a male INFP. So when I was in school in New Orleans, so I went to college in New Orleans in the year 2000, and I was in a relationship with somebody who is actually now deceased. Um, but I was in a relationship with her and she was actually an ENFP, which I really don't think is um, that important to this discussion because I think anybody can be violent and anybody can participate in abuse toward a partner. So that's that really doesn't have anything to do with it. But just to paint the picture for you, she was an ENFP, so she was a really outgoing person and we were both conflict avoided because I'm an INFP. And so I don't want to, you know, if something happens that really bothers me, I tend to stuff it down. And, and likewise, she did the same thing too. And what happened once was we were drinking. So back then I used to drink a lot. I don't drink anymore. I stopped drinking a long time ago, but we both, we both used to drink a lot. And I think this is something that isn't brought up a lot in domestic violence when people talk about it. It's like people just don't like to bring up the fact that alcohol or drugs are involved because I think... There's this thing where people, they, if, if you drink, you don't want to admit that drinking may be a cause to some of these other issues because then you have to look at yourself. So people like to say, oh, that person's abusive and there's no other reason to explain it, but they're a bad person. But I think a lot of times if somebody has this darkness in them and they drink alcohol, the alcohol will bring it out of them. And so what I saw with her was that one time we were drinking and we took like six shots in a row or something like that. We were heavy drinkers at the time. And obviously I, I stopped drinking because it was a problem for me, but we were heavy drinkers at the time. And I think that she was probably holding some things in that she wanted to tell me and didn't know how to express it. And that could be just my any excuses coming up, but I don't really know. And all I remember is that we took these shots and we were sitting at this card table in my stingy little, my, my dank little apartment in New Orleans. And she just suddenly, punches me rapid fire in the chest like six times as hard as she could and granted she was a black belt in taekwondo she was on the crew team she was a tough person so this about this when this happened this was probably about the year 2002 and as a male i thought nothing of it i actually at the time when it happened i just thought okay what i need to do is get away from her because I don't want to, I don't want to continue to take punches from her. I just need to remove myself from the situation. I did not think of it as abuse at all, not not in the least bit. It wasn't until about ten or fifteen years later that I thought, I wonder if that was abuse. <laughs> and like, and that's, that's crazy to think about that. It's like, I wonder if that was abuse. Let's see. She rapid fire punched me six times in the chest as hard as she could, knocked the wind out of me for no reason. Like no, no apparent reason at the time that I could tell. And that's the thing that we have to deal with. 
as males and as INFPs is like, if we go to somebody and we say, oh, this woman is punching me or this woman is, you know, scratching me, biting me, doing whatever, people will look at you and, and they'll say, oh, that sucks. But if the tables are flipped and a woman goes and says, this man is punching and, and kicking me and doing whatever, people are going to just get up in arms with like the torches and the pitchforks and they're going to come for you. And this actually leads into my story with my friend and I want to get into that. So stick around. So, you know, people will just get an uproar about it. But when it comes, when the, the tables are turned back and it's the guy on the reciprocating end of the abuse, people just are kind of like, oh, that sucks. You know, like, how, how'd you deal with it? You know, it's like, you don't really get a lot of compassion. And it's like, as men, I think we internalize this attitude. It's like, we're growing up. It's like, you just, you got to stay tough. You got to not show your emotions whatsoever. And INFP is like, we don't show our emotions. We, well, we try not to until we explode. Like if, if something happens, you know, we get really upset, but we tend to stuff things down. So when abuse happens, we will just push it down and push it down. And again, like I said at the beginning, we have NE as our second function in our, dom in our uh, function stack. So we come up with all these excuses and like we can write it off. And you know, that's, that's the problem. And that's how we can get caught into this loop of domestic violence where we keep making excuses for people when we shouldn't be, we should be getting out. We shouldn't be idealizing people like that because then we're just in love with this image of this person that's not real. We're making excuses for them. We're not living in reality. And as humans, we need to be living in reality. I know INFPs, we love to live in fantasy land, but fantasy land has to be in conjunction with reality or we're gonna die. Okay, we cannot live in fantasy land 100%. And I know you INFPs know that. We like to think that we live in fantasy land a lot of the time, and we do, but we have to live in reality too, or we just get un incredibly unhealthy. And this brings me to my friend, and I wanna talk about this because I think this is really important and it's really disturbing. So I have a, a friend of mine that was a really good friend of mine at the same time that I was dating this girl that I talked about. And this friend of mine was an INFP. I'm, I've thought about it and I, I don't know about all you other folks out there who like to type people and type your friends and family members, but I do that with my friends and family members. And sometimes I get real baffled and I'm, I get caught between maybe like two types. Like, I don't know what this person is. And this particular friend of mine, he, I was toggling between him being an INFP and an INTP. And so I can see a lot of those characteristics in him but I came to the conclusion that he's an INFP. And so I, I lost touch with him. Um, I was in a band with him when I was living in New Orleans and I lost touch with him after 2004 when I moved away from New Orleans. Then Katrina came in 2005. I wasn't even in New Orleans at that time. He was, and then he moved away. I never talked to the guy again, but I was really close to him. He was a roommate of mine. I got close like two INFPs, like sometimes it takes a while for us to warm up to each other. And, and with, you know, him and me, we did, but we eventually clicked and then we got really close. And I wanted to know what he was up to. I was like, I haven't talked to him since 2004. It's been like 18 years since I last heard from him. And I found his, he doesn't have a Facebook profile, but I found his new wife online. And I messaged, messaged his new wife and I said, hey, um, can I speak to such and such? Like, I, I'm just an old friend from school and I'm just trying to catch up with him and see what he's up to. And I heard back a day later, so last night, and she said, oh, wow, you know, um, I don't talk to him anymore. We're actually getting divorced. Um, and that he literally beat her to the point of hospitalization. And that was baffling to me. I don't really know what to think about it. You know, like I'm in, in person, as of the moment of making this video, I'm still processing it. I don't really know like what to think of it because you know, I think of, of INFPs as being these people that are very altruistic and very understanding of people. And, and, and my NE is going crazy now and I'm thinking of all the possibilities. And I remember, you know, my friend, he was a heavy drinker back then. And, and I can't, I could suspect that alcohol again plays a huge role 
in this cycle. So I can imagine if he's got that darkness in him and he's an INFP, add alcohol to the mix. It doesn't matter who you are. When you add alcohol to the mix, it'll ease that darkness out of you. People don't like to talk about that, but alcohol does that for some reason. Not all drugs do that, but alcohol does. A lot of the hard drugs do. And so never say never. You can never say that a certain type is a certain way. You could say, oh, an ISFJ would never hurt somebody or an ESTP would never be empathetic. You can't say stuff like this because it's just a gross blanket statement that just doesn't really apply. And I think when you add alcohol to the mix, it screws everything up.